Hi and welcome to the We Are Zion Sermon Podcast. We are a local church based here in Chennai, India. I'm Christine, your host. We are so glad you are here and our hope is that this will encourage, inspire and instill fresh faith in you. We continue with our series on Only Jesus. Here's Pastor Geshom with today's message. And even as we step into God's word, let's ask God to speak to us, to minister to us. We've been going through this series called Only Jesus. And over the last few weeks, we've been seeing how Jesus was uh, a friend of sinners, how he actually was a promise keeper. He was a miracle worker. He was a fulfiller of life. And even as we step into this week, we're going to see how he is an overcomer of evil. Today, um, all of us, in fact, the entire world is at lockdown. There's um, each and every country has taken measures to make sure they can contain their people indoors. And so uh, to us today, the biggest evil and the threat, we could have so many on our list. But to us, it could be probably this entire epidemic of COVID-19. As much as we are probably uh, anxious, we are probably uh, just refreshing our web pages to check what the latest update is, is there some kind of breakthrough? Let's remember one thing that Jesus has overcome evil. He did it a long time back. In fact, the assurance that we have is the finished work of the cross was a victory that was won. And so all this that's happening right now is meant to happen, but it doesn't diminish or take the value away from who God is. God, in fact, is sovereign. And so even as we step into this uh, series, I would like to set the context by reading 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. It goes on to say like this, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Even as we've just finished reading this passage, I would like to read verse 3 from Passion Translation and it goes on to say like this, True love for God means obeying His commands and His commands don't weigh us down as heavy burdens. To overcome evil, the primary thing that we see is obedience. And obedience happens only when we love God and love that He knows what's best for us. To overcome evil, we need to choose to get deep into God's word. Uh, The first passage that we've taken is from Matthew chapter 4. And uh, as we've been doing through this entire series, we're going into the Lumo series to look into this and hear God's word. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Even as we heard, I'm reading Matthew 4, 4 from the message version and says this, Jesus answered by quoting Deuteronomy, It takes more than bread to stay alive. It takes a steady stream of words from God's mouth. For Jesus, it was just not a one day thing that he was just tired and fatigued. In fact, he was on this journey for 40 days. He was fasting. He was praying. He was um, he was weak and it's, it's at this moment that Satan comes in and questions him and his purpose for what he's been called to do. And he tells, takes him off course and says, looks at, uh, tells him to look at the stone and says, why don't you turn this to bread and you can feed on it. Whereas Jesus goes on to say, no, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. In fact, steady stream of words. Uh, it got me thinking, uh, how is God's word a steady stream? And so I was just doing, um, just going through and looking at the characteristics of a stream. Oftentimes we don't come across streams uh, in the places where that we live at. We either have a lake, we either have, uh, we have the beach. But so uh, uh, the definition for uh, the characteristic that was given for the stream goes on to say like this. Streams are more intimately connected with the surrounding land than are most lakes or ponds. And so if you notice here, uh, reading God's word 
would actually take us to a place where we'll be intimate with God. We'll find out that we cannot live without this. Um, looking back, um, a year and a half back into my own personal life, there was a time when I actually had to fall back on God's word more than ever before. Most of you know that my wife was um, diagnosed with brain aneurysm and so we had to get it treated. And so after three weeks after finding it out, we had scheduled and uh, we got ourselves admitted in. And as she was getting rolled in to the uh, procedure room, to, to the operation theater to get the procedure done, uh, I was outside and uh, the last few exchanges that me and my wife had was, uh, she was so confident of where she was going. In fact, she was uh, so confident, controlled, composed, knowing that God had her back. And so she said, you know what, uh, whatever the worst outcome might be, I know where I'm going. And here I was standing next to her as his husband, um, trying to be strong uh, because I didn't want to give up hope. But the minute, uh, they wheeled her in and they told me to wait outside and I came outside and there was no one in that corridor. And all I could do was just stand there and suddenly this entire wave of doubt of these emotions that, that came. What if I was just left alone uh, looking after my wife without uh, the, uh, the outcome of the surgery didn't go well and what if she uh, suffered a stroke or what if she was left paralyzed in bed or what if she didn't make it through? How would I father my three kids? And then it was just a few couple of these minutes that it just, it just hit me so strong. But then uh, I just realized, you know what? I can't give in to this. I couldn't. We've done so well so far. And then immediately I just pulled out my phone and went back to reading my daily devotional passage. And God ministered through that. His words came through. And then within a few minutes of like 10 or 15 minutes, a uh, couple of her relatives just landed up there and they started encouraging. So you're going to understand that in life, if we do not have the backing of the steady flow of God's word flowing into our lives, we are going to be in panic mode always. In today's world, we are trying to figure out, okay, is my job secure? Is uh, How are we going to get provisionals? Or uh, for you know to meet our everyday uh, the food how how do how do we go about to it it we can be in a place of anxiety always we can be in a place of self doubt we can be in a place of not knowing what the future uh, holds we probably as parents might be getting scared what is it that we've given birth to to our kids that the future is so bleak there's nothing we might be in a state of confusion. And all that we can do right now is to lean in and flow in that steady stream of God's word. God will speak to us. In fact, God's word is so unique that it speaks to each and every one so directly to each and every circumstance. I think as a human, we'll be never be able to actually speak to everyone at the same time, catering to every need, but God's word can. Looking back at Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 to 5, this is what it goes on to say. Be careful to follow every command I'm giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know that what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor his ancestors had known to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. Know then in your heart that as man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. So even at this time, even as we're trying to find a way of how we can overcome evil, we need to understand the more we lean into God and lean into the steady reading of God's scripture, it's going to flood our hearts. And at the same time, it's going to take control of those emotions. That doubt that we have of what tomorrow might hold or not hold, we'll completely understand that God who's led us thus far, God who's led me thus far, 35 years, he's faithful enough to lead me tomorrow, the day after and the years to come. So let's hold on to that. His word never fails. His word never fails. The second thing is to be an overcomer of evil is we need, we must choose to trust God and not test him. We're going to re continue uh, hearing and seeing from Matthew chapter 4. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. 
If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Matthew chapter 4 verse 7 in the message says, Jesus countered with another citation from Deuteronomy, Don't you dare test the Lord your God. It's easy for us to uh, actually take claim to a scripture, test it out and see if God is real. But as you decide to follow God and ask him to be God over your life, you'll soon understand that every scripture that I claim out like that is not for my present time. God actually grows us to this place to understand the scripture in its entirety and that we'll soon understand that God has bigger plans and purposes. In fact, God's placed us here for a time such as this in 2020 to fulfill his plan. Even as Jesus is being tempted, Satan quotes back Bible verse to him. He in fact quotes from Psalm 91. So the enemy that's actually you're standing up against is also aware of the Bible verses that you're reading. If we are not careful to actually dwell deep into it, we can be misled by those verses. In fact, Satan goes on to quote Psalms 91, but he just takes uh, a particular section of it where it says, if you just fall down, he'll send his angels to guard over you. But the truth is, the important thing is, if you go back to the start of the verse, it beautifully says where the psalmist says, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. In fact, uh, when you look at the Greek word for shelter, it uh, the Greek word is beseta. And then, uh, when you understand what a shelter is, in, in fact, today, if we had to uh, look at the word shelter, shelter, it wouldn't be a house where you would want to reside. In fact, the word shelter that we use is probably for those who are outside without any uh, roof over their heads. They need to be in a shelter home or it's a place of refuge for someone who's at a time of distress. And we need to understand that God is our shelter. Uh, I'm reminded of a time when, uh, how many of you uh, would have experienced this if you're trying to cross a street or you're stranded because it's raining heavily, you oftentimes use what's in your hand to just give, it, give you a form of shelter at that time just to cross through so that you don't get completely drenched. And oftentimes when we decide to follow God, God might seem just like that piece of cloth or that bag or even probably a laptop bag which you're trying to hold, trying to hold on top of you and get through that. But are we willing to abide even in that? Are we really willing to abide even if it doesn't seem like this is God in its entirety? Many a times, uh, a shelter may not be like home where it might be a spacious two-bedroom house which would be comfortable, but are we willing to abide? And that's what the psalmist goes on to say. God is not a genie. God is not here to, even a genie has three strikes. If you followed the movie Allah, then you'll realize every request, there's a strike out. They can maximum use a genie thrice. And so we'll realize that God is not a genie. He's not just here to be on demand, to actually just give what I want. But it's important for us to understand that even as we are in this season, are we willing to take shelter in God? It might not look comforting to us, but are we still willing to rest and abide and take refuge? Because if you read on that entire psalm, it's interesting. It says he, he will just surround us with his arms, you know. And many a times we need that from a loving father. That's what we need from a loving God. That's what we need. The third thing that we're going to uh, step into and see is to overcome evil. We need to choose who we will worship and who we will serve. Let's uh, get into Matthew chapter 4 and continue seeing this. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Matthew chapter 4 verses 10 uh, in the message it says, Jesus' refusal was curt, beated Satan. He backed his rebuke with a third quotation from Deuteronomy, Worship the Lord your God and only him. Serve him with absolute single-heartedness. How many of you can agree that doing just one thing is tough? 
I mean, for me, I uh, I I take pride most of the time that I can multitask. But I've realized that even in multitasking, I'm not able to achieve hundred percent efficiency. There's no hundred like it's split across so many other things. Still, a point where it comes to a place where I need to just take a paper out and just put okay one, two, and three, and then do things uh, you know systematically and just completing one thing after the other. So here it goes on to say Jesus rebuttled him. In fact, it's interesting because Satan always will use the things of the world to. take us off course so that we cannot pursue single heartedly god we will not be able to pursue him alone we will get distracted by the glamour we will be distracted by the wealth we will be distracted by the luxury we will be distracted by the comfort of where we are at so are we willing to worship and serve god it's interesting that the verse says worship that we should choose to worship and serve god because often times the thing or the person who we decide to worship is the thing that we decide to serve if we decide to worship god we can only really serve him alone and here satan uses uh this the the things of the world to dissuade jesus so that he can have uh authority over him in fact it's important to understand satan will do anything and everything so that he has authority over us One of the things that we can see here is Jesus tells him that you shall worship the Lord your God alone and him shall you serve. We cannot worship God and serve something else or we cannot worship something else and then thinking and think of serving God. There won't be fruitfulness at the end of it. So it's important for us to worship God and serve him alone. Uh reading from Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 13 to 16 it goes on to say fear the Lord your God in fact this is the reply back that Jesus gave uh quoting Deuteronomy to Satan fear the Lord your God serve him only and take your oaths in his name do not follow other gods the gods of the peoples around you for the Lord your God who is among you is a jealous god and his anger will burn against you and he will destroy you from face of the land do not put the lord your god to test as you did at masa in fact if you look here at the word masa masa is a place in exodus what happened was people began to grumble they began to in fact i think god detests grumbling it it comes to this place where god had let them beautifully into this uh, out of egypt out of slavery uh, he made them cross the red sea and then they are in this place where they wanted water they are so thirsty that they started grumbling they told moses we were better off even in slavery back in egypt and i think god's anger comes from a place like that where he is like if we are ungrateful and we don't actually acknowledge god for all that he's done we can get into the same space of just being grumblers we can find fault in everything that we're going through right now Many a times I've done the same thing where I've grumbled of the current situation that we are in. It comes down to this: Are we willing to submit to God's authority? Satan used the entire stretch of land before him to entice Jesus and say, "Hey, I'll give you everything." He will always use lies and schemes so that he can skew us from following God's plan and purpose, so that we can move ourselves away and follow and be under His authority. In this 21 day lockdown are we willing to actually go under the authority of Jesus go under his authority so that we'll be able to serve and do things what he's required us to do because if we don't do that we'll give in to certain things certain things such as loneliness how many of us can just uh, some of you might be stuck at home just alone just staying there by yourselves some of you might be amongst family members or amongst your friends in a lockdown and you can still feel lonely how many of you are feeling purposelessness today we find so much purpose in being busy in doing things in being out there but then being confined within the four walls we will lack a lot of purpose how many of us might be even giving into certain things especially binge watching If we get into the trap of binge watching we we'll soon realize that they come on our lives they in fact will start suggesting what else we can watch are we willing to submit to god's authority it's important to submit to god's authority because it's in that submission that we kind of like find purpose we find avenues in which we can serve and do what he's called us to do so it's important for us to always understand that we have to set our worship to god alone so that we can serve him alone uh, in my own life uh, there was a season when 
uh, my work required me to travel quite a bit i had to travel at the same time uh, i i i stayed in different hotels uh, when i traveled and at night times i didn't get sleep and the struggle was for me is i felt lonely in those times coming back to a hotel room was the most toughest thing in fact a lot of my friends know that any city that i visited i would in fact meet with them for dinner and try hanging with them out as much as i can so that i could just go back tired and just sleep but then it came to this place where i had to ask god for help and then god gave this beautiful way in which i could just create a playlist of worship songs and allow that to just play through the night and i realized that at the end of it i couldn't have done this alone could god actually come and give me an answer he could he could empathize with me how honest are we with god if we are really honest with god god is really willing to help us does god really know where i am he knows where i am but he wants me to open my mouth and ask god for help it's as simple as that he knows every intention he knows every heartache he knows every thought but god wants us to ask for help can you make an honest effort today to take time to read god's word it starts with small steps being intimate with god starts in different forms it could be in prayer you can start having this honest conversations with god and then you st- slowly can not do without it because you are so much in love in talking with god it can start in worshiping god in your spaces sing out and lift up your hands because god is glorified when you glorify god everything else diminishes you give authority to god saying god i give you in control so can we allow these steady words to become something that our heart has room and space for as we conclude today's sermon i would like to recap all the three points that we just saw to overcome evil can we choose to get deep into god's word can we choose to trust god and not test god can we choose to worship god and to serve him wholeheartedly This Jesus who overcame evil who overcame temptation is not far away he's not a distant god he's not a god who you need to go and visit in fact he's a god who can actually come and just sit next to you and who can be next to you and even talk next to you so are you willing to actually allow Jesus to come into your hearts today probably you're seated here listening and you're probably having so many doubts about why god's allowing so many things to happen in your life or why is so many things happening around you and you still are questioning does god really exists i want to give this opportunity and ask if you would give a moment to actually allow jesus to come into your heart because there's no better way to actually look into the next day or into the future without jesus jesus holds the future and he's willing to be your savior reading from romans chapter 10 verse 9 it goes on to say and what is god's living message It is the revelation of faith for salvation which is the message that we preach. For if you publicly declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will experience salvation. So even at this time I just want you to close your eyes wherever you are and if you can just repeat this prayer after me to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal savior. Dear Lord Jesus I am a sinner Thank you for coming into this world for me. Thank you for dying on the cross. I believe my sins are forgiven. With my mouth I acknowledge you as Lord and Savior over my life. May you be glorified and honored. Come into my life. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening to this message. We hope you were blessed. To hear more messages like this, make sure to subscribe and check out our podcast channel for past episodes. If you like what you are hearing, consider rating us, subscribing, and even sharing it with friends. That would really help us. For more content from We Are Zion and to connect with us, go to weazion.in. Remember, whoever finds Jesus finds life.